I'm going to build a couple charts that uh, show school performance and I want to compare test scores in all the schools in a state uh, to uh, something like poverty, kids that are in poverty. How well do they do compared to those that uh, are not in poverty? Um, I usually go to a state agency to get the data, but with poverty data like free and reduced lunch count, percentage of kids below the uh, you know poverty level, uh, they don't always like to release that in mass. Um, you can get individual school data, but not a downloadable database. Uh, one resource, I imagine there's several on the web, but uh, one good one I found is called schooldigger.com. You see all the different states. Uh, I've highlighted Oregon. Uh, I'm going to select Oregon's data. Um, Oregon school rankings. I'm not really interested in their school rankings. Uh, I'm just going to use their data to make a, a comparison chart on my own. Uh, I can look through the data they have there, various schools, um, and it's designed for someone who is going to move to the state and they, they're looking for a good school. Um, my interest is slightly different. Uh, I want to get some plotted graphs top level for the state and compare it with other states or with a particular district within the state. So I'm going to download their database. And the first time you do this, they're going to ask you uh, to pay for a database. They're about $2 each. But <laughs> I'm going to get three of them, and it turns out at $6, you can get an unlimited number of them for a month. Uh, so I've already paid the $6. Uh, I'm going to save a file. I'm using uh, Firefox here. puts it up here in this download arrow. And there's my uh, Excel database. Now these are all the elementary schools. Uh, I'm going to drag that to the desktop so I'll know where it is. I'm going to create a little folder um, to put it in. Uh, I'll call that uh, school data. And uh, this is just going to be the raw data that uh, I'll use. I'm going to actually label that so I'll know that that is elementary schools. And I know it's the year 2012 and 13. That's the school year. And it's uh, for the fourth grade. And it's what Oregon calls the Oaks test. And you can see all that information right here. Um, it's also, I guess I should also say it's for reading and math. That means it's a combined score that you're going to be plotting of both reading and math. Any educator that looks at the chart you produce is going to ask that question. You know, where'd you get the data? What's it include? Uh, and so on. Well, that's elementary school. I also want to get middle schools. There's a button for middle schools. I click that. And there's a download again, so just bear with me a minute here while I uh, download um, two additional files. And this is the middle school. And I'm also going to click the button for high school. And you can see high school, this is 10th grade, reading and math shows up uh, for the same year. And again, I'll, I'll save that. Okay, now I'm pretty well done with School Digger at this point. I have three separate databases that you can see here. One is elementary and then a middle school and a uh, high school. I'm going to open up the elementary school and use that as kind of a base where I'm going to build the charts uh, and graphs. And, um, the first thing I always do is I select the entire database by clicking this top left corner. And I go down here to this little tab at the bottom of the spreadsheet. Um, and I'm going to copy. I've put uh, copy, paste, or, and cut all up here in the top. So I'm just going to do a copy of the entire database, open up this little tab, and do a paste. Now. What I've done basically is preserved the original data right here. And I can now go over to this spreadsheet, and if I right-click on it, 
I can rename it, and I'm going to call this merged data. Um, the idea here is that I can mess with this data and, for instance, get rid of these first four uh, rows that say stuff that I'm not interested in. And I just, on the Home tab, I just go over here to Delete once I've highlighted them. You highlight them by clicking the extreme left-hand side. That, that will select the entire row. If you want to delete a column, you select the top A, B, C, D. Uh, if I just want to delete the data, then I just click inside the field and select what I want to delete. But in this case, I want to move all these rows up. I want to get rid of those first four. So um, I select the four, and then I go up here to delete, and it removes them. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is go, actually, I'm going to freeze some frames so I can see this title. This title is valuable because it says where the data is, and it has to line up with the other middle school and high school spreadsheets when I merge them. So to freeze a frame, you just click right below in, on the extreme left-hand side of what you want to freeze. And you go up here to View, and you'll see uh, Freeze Frame. And when you click that, it gives you a number of choices. Uh, I'm just going to freeze the first column in this particular situation. And now when I drag the elevator down, well, that's interesting. That didn't work. <laughs> Try a different one. Um, let's see. Freeze first column. That's not right. Top row. So I got the wrong one. Interesting. There it goes. Now I can see that top row as I go down. And you see there's quite a bit of data here. Uh, it's, uh, uh, you know, 700 schools that are in uh, uh, elementary schools in the state of Oregon. Well, let me, let me talk now about merging it with another uh, spreadsheet. Uh, let's take this one. It was one I also downloaded. This happens to be high schools. Uh, I can enable labeling and this time, or enable editing. This time I'm just going to select the rows that I want. And uh, I've, I just drag the uh, uh, mouse all the way down and select the entire data sheet. This is the data, and I've put it in the column and drag it down. I go up here and I do a, uh, a copy. And now I go back to the original data sheet. I just close that one. Now I'm back on the original one, and I can just do a paste. So I come up here and I do a paste. That puts the high school data right below um, the uh, uh, elementary school data. And I'm going to check the header to see that uh, there, just to be able to compare headers, that the same rows and columns are in both spreadsheets, that all the data lines up. And it looks like it does. So I can now erase or eliminate that one row, and I will just highlight that one row that has header for high schools and say delete. It goes away. Uh, the last thing I do is uh, to add the middle schools. I go down here to the bottom. I repeat the process, essentially, and uh, this time I will open up the, uh, the middle school and I will enable editing, and I will drag all the way to the bottom. You can't see this too well, so I think I'll move it back up into here where you can see what I'm doing. If you have a whole lot of data you want to select, a quick way is to just select part of it, then drag the elevator all the way down to the bottom of your data, where in this case there's 378 of them. Put your cursor on the uh, last row and hold down the shift key and click, and it will select the entire data set. That goes a little bit faster. Uh, now I'm doing a copy, and I put that away. I want to save what's on the clipboard as I put that away. These are high schools. I don't want them. Um,
Uh, what is this? This is elementary school, so I'm going to do a paste on the elementary school. So I've essentially turned the elementary school uh, spreadsheet tab number two into the merged data. And uh, again, I'm going to go up and check the header to make sure the same columns are all matching. Schooldigger.com tends to do a good job of keeping everything on all states the same. So when you learn a process for one state, it would be the same for uh, others as well. Here's, um, uh, let's see, what, what do we got? So we've got about 1,382 schools, if when you drop off the header. Um, I'm going to save this particular spreadsheet because now I'm going to start manipulating it a bit. And uh, the first thing I want to do is, uh, let's say, move it over. I'm going to select the whole thing again, do a copy. I'm going to create a new tab down here at the bottom. And I'm going to paste it into that new tab. Again, I've preserved my merged data, so I can go back to that if I mess up on this one. Uh, now, with this one, I'm going to freeze the first three columns. Uh, it isn't absolutely necessary that you do what I'm going to do here, but I found it to be handy in the long run. Um, I'm going to insert three blank columns. I just highlight the first three, and I clicked, clicked Insert. Then I'm going to freeze frames right there. Um, and the freeze will be so that uh, I can both scroll down and see the header, and I can scroll left to right and still see those three rows. These three rows will be what I use for producing a graph. Um, the first row is always the free and reduced lunch, or it'd be your X value. This will be the bottom horizontal uh, line, and I find free and reduced uh, meal way over here in column X. So I highlight column X, and again, I by by clicking the X at the very top, I do a copy, and I place it in the first, which Excel will look at as the first column or the X column, and I do a paste. Now what I have over here is exactly the same as this. They're all in alignment. That's very critical. You could paste it off by one or two, and the data would then be uh, spoiled. The, the school data would match a different school, <clears throat> and your chart would be inaccurate. So you got to make sure that these are, are exactly matching, and they appear to be. Uh, the second or B column right here that I'm going to fill is going to be the uh, average combined test scores of uh, the students uh, for both reading and math. And the average score <coughs> combined is right here. Uh, and it's in column O. And I'm going to select it again. And I'll do a, a copy. And I'll place it again right in the first top cell. And I'll do a paste. Uh, and the last one I, I use when I do a three-dimensional chart, and you don't have to do that here, of course, um, and I'm not actually going to produce a three-dimensional chart, chart yet, uh, would be the number of students that have taken the test. Um, and the number of students is in column U right here, number of students. And I'm going to do a copy, and again, I'm going to do a paste. So you can see the numbers line up. Um, got 176 there, 176 there. Um, so the first three rows now I have um, saved the, um, the x-axis, the y-axis, and a third dimensional axis if I need it, just number of students. And I always like to save things in between just in case I mess it up. So I just click the Save button up at the top. 
Uh, now I want to get rid of uh, some data that might be blank. You notice this cell right here is blank. Uh, there's no data. Um, consequently, Excel has trouble with that. Um, so I want to get rid of the, the no data schools where they did not submit data. And the easiest way is to select the entire spreadsheet and do a sort. Uh, once I select the whole data sheet, I go up here to data and I do sort. Um, and because I have headers, I can actually, uh, uh, my data has headers, sort on. And I'm going to pick free and reduced lunch, which is the title of this particular column. Do a sort. And now I've got it set so that in this field they're sorted. And you can see they gradually get bigger. When I go all the way down to the bottom, I can see those blanks ended up at the bottom. Here they are. And, and with Oregon, unlike most states, there's quite a few that have not reported. Most states report uh, almost all the data we're looking at here, but Oregon, for some reason, did not. Um, there's probably uh, 100 schools or so that didn't. So I highlight them on the extreme left-hand edge, and I go up here and I say, uh, go back to the Home tab, and I say Delete. Um, now I can go back up the top. Now this doesn't really ruin your data, but if you lose too many of them, you obviously are going to have some schools that you can't uh, look at because they just disappear. Uh, again, I'm going to save this. So it's a good practice just to save your work every so often. As you know, I'm sure if you use computers a lot. Um, so now I'm ready to make uh, a chart, except I notice some anomalies here. Instead of reporting a 200, which is the top score you could get, they have actually uh, reported some screwy different numbers here with greater than or less than. So what I'll do is uh, try to get rid of the, uh, turn them into normal looking numbers. And to do that, I'll have to do a, uh, a search and replace. Um, to, uh, to replace something or get rid of characters, you go way over here to find and select. And there's an item called replace. Uh, and in there, I can type what I don't want. Uh, to, and I, I'm going to search for it as a greater than symbol and an equal than. And I'm going to replace it with nothing. And then I'll select replace all. And look at that. It found 70 of them that had this uh, greater than or equal to. So they didn't report their full score, just we were above this particular point. Uh, they also, I would guess, have some less than and equal to, so I will change and search for those as well. Yep, there were nine of them uh, in there. So I've now corrected that data. Um, again, I'll save it. And uh, I'm now ready to make sure that these two columns, which I'm going to be plotting in the next uh, segment, have a, uh, a numerical character in them. Uh, there are occasions when they put text information in there. And I want to make sure that those two have uh, one place past the decimal and that they're numbers. They're not text. So I click Numbers. I change this to 1. And I click OK. I can do the same thing here, making sure that there's no decimals or no text. Uh, again, I click Numbers, and I make this 0. Say OK. Now my data is ready to be plotted, and that will be uh, what we'll do in the next uh, session. So hope to see uh, you there. Bye now.